long before Jeffrey Dahmer ever sent chills down the spines of Americans. The foothills of Lincoln County, Kentucky had given birth to its own monster on January 28, 1828. His name was Levi Boone Helm, and he would go down in history forever known as the Kentucky Cannibal. Helm was born into a family of honest, hard-working, and respectful people. He was raised up with an upbringing that was in sharp contrast to the life that he'd lead. As a boy, his family moved to Monroe County, Missouri, and from a young age he showed exceptional physical abilities, and he had a reputation for his exceptional strength and agility, such as throwing a knife into the ground and picking it up while on a horse at full speed but his physical strength was matched by rebellious streak. Once, he successfully ruined a sheriff's attempt to arrest him by jumping on his horse and riding off. He even went to the extent of walking the horse up the stairs of the courthouse while it was in session, yelling curse words at the judge. In 1851, Boone married 17-year-old Lucinda Francis Browning in Missouri and they had a daughter they called Lucy. But the domestic life didn't suit him. His notorious habits of heavy drinking, riding his horse into the house, and beating the snot out of his wife led to Lucinda petitioning for divorce. Helm's father paid for the cost of the divorce. After bankrupting his family and tarnishing their reputation, Helm perhaps in an attempt to escape the ruin that he left behind, headed west to California in search of gold. He invited his cousin, Little Barry Shute, to accompany him, and he agreed. But when Little Barry tried to back out, Ham, in a fit of rage, stabbed him in the chest and killed him, and then continued his journey westward alone. Little Burry's brother chased Helm down, and this led to Helm's capture and conviction for murder. However, Helm's annex and captivity landed him in a mental asylum, and he managed to convince the guards to take him on walks in the woods, and it's become a routine. Using this to his advantage, Helm managed to escape and continued westward. His journey west was marked by more murders, and he had confessed to some traders that he traveled with that he had not only killed many men, but also had ate parts of them, especially at times when food was scarce. A many's the poor devil I've killed at one time or other, and the time has been that I've obliged to feed on some of them, Boone was quoted as saying. On one occasion, when they were attacked by Native Americans and ran out of rations, Ham's party had to resort to eating their horses, and this was followed by a harrowing journey through the wilderness, and it resulted in the death of all the party members except for Ham and a man named Burton. When Burton could go no farther, Ham left him behind only to return to hear the sound of Burton's pistols he took his own life. And maybe in a bit to survive, Helm ate one of Burton's legs, and he wrapped the other one up in a red rag and carried it along with him. He was eventually discovered by a man named John W. Powell at an Indian camp, and Powell allowed Helm to accompany him to Salt Lake City. But Helm despite having what was claimed to be a hefty sum of money on him, 
never paid, nor never even thanked pal. After killing some random people in Salt Lake, he went on to San Francisco, and he even killed a rancher who had sheltered him from the law. Then he headed to Oregon, and he continued to rob and kill. In 1862, Ham went into a local saloon mighty drunk, and he gunned down an unarmed man by the name of Dutch Fred. Now, Fred was known to be a fighter, but Ham shot him down in cold blood, and he fled off into the night. After being chased down and jailed for killing Dutch Fred, he got word to his brother, Old Tex, who then paid off most of the witnesses. And with no proof of the crime, the law had to let him go, and he headed toward Texas with his brother. Ham started appearing in random settlements, and that enticed him to rob and kill a bunch more people. And this continued on for some time until he was captured in Montana, but not before he joined up with a gang of outlaws under the leadership of Henry Plummer. Now when Ham was finally caught in Montana, he was tried in secret and sentenced to hang. And on the day of his execution, Ham showed no remorse. He said he kissed the Bible, blamed his crimes on his fellow gang member, Three Finger Jack Gallagher. One by one, the gang members met their fates at the end of the rope. As Ham watched his friends and fellow gang member, Three Finger Jack Gallagher, ascend the stairs to the gallows, there was no fear in his eyes only a grand acceptance of what was to come. And as a noose tightened around Gallagher's neck, Ham reportedly called out, Kick away, old feller. My turn next. I'll be in hell with you in a minute. He was defined as ever, still blaming his crimes on Gallagher. But he showed no fear. As the executioner approached him, he allegedly shouted, Every man for his principles. Hooray for Jeff Davis. Let her rip. And with that, before the executioner could kick away the hangman's box, Ham jumped off of it, choosing to meet his fate on his own terms. Ham was buried in the Boot Hill Cemetery in Virginia City. His life serves as a reminder of the thin line that's between civilization and the dark side, a line that Ham never crossed to the side of civilization. His tale is a story into the depths of depravity that a man can sink to, reminding us of the darkness that can hide behind the corners of strength and rebellion.